We're going to talk through the greenhouse effect in the context of the planet Earth. There are other places in the solar system that have a greenhouse effect, notably like Venus, but Mars has a has a weak greenhouse effect. So it's not just planet Earth, um, but that's a planet we live on. So we're going to focus on the greenhouse effect in the in the context of home sweet home. All right. So objects give off different amounts of light depending upon their temperatures. Figure one below shows the energy output of our sun along with the percent of energy given off by the sun in ultraviolet, visible, and infrared portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it's giving you the relative area under the curve. So ultraviolet light is 7% of the total energy. Visible light is 44% and infrared light 48%. Which two forms of energy, of light, account for the majority of energy coming from the sun? Ultraviolet, visible, or infrared? And that is going to be visible and infrared. So all told, that's going to be 92%. Which of the three accounts for the least energy? UV, so ultraviolet, and that's 7%. Consider the following debate between two students regarding the energy given off by the sun. Student one, I think that the sun gives off most of its energy at ultraviolet wavelengths because ultraviolet light is more intense than visible light and you always hear about ultraviolet light causing sunburns. Student 2. Even though UV photons are more energetic than visible photons, the sun, sim the sun simply gives off fewer ultraviolet photons and gives off way more visible and infrared photons. So I think that these longer wavelength photons account for most of the energy coming from the sun. So I would agree with student two. Um, most of the energy coming from the sun is going to be invisible or infrared. Student one is right that ultraviolet light can cause sunburn. Um, individual photons like visible light are not energetic enough to cause that damage to your cells. Um, but overall, the sun is putting out less energy um, by a large factor in the ultraviolet light compared to visible or infrared. So that's the energy input from the sun. And then let's see what our atmosphere does to that energy. Earth's surface temperature is affected by light that is absorbed at the surface. That seems reasonable. That's where the earth becomes opaque and that's where the energy is absorbed. However, a photon's ability to travel through our atmosphere depends upon its wavelength. Figure 2 below shows that some wavelengths of light are absorbed in our atmosphere more than others. The figure also lists the primary gas molecules responsible for absorbing the different wavelengths of light. So in the ultraviolet, we have pretty much perfect absorption by oxygen and ozone uh, until you get near the boundary between UV and visible. So this is where uh, the UVA uh, starts to become transparent and can make it to the ground causing sunburns. But most all of the ultraviolet light is absorbed. There's not much absorption across the visible part of the spectrum. And then as we look at longer wavelengths into the infrared, we have absorption features due to water and carbon dioxide, where for like a range of wavelengths, uh, essentially all of the light is absorbed in the infrared. And then as you go to longer wavelengths in the infrared, um, water molecules are going to absorb all of that infrared light. So that can't traverse through the atmosphere without being absorbed and re-emitted. So comparing the visible and infrared types of light, which would you say has an easier time getting through our atmosphere, which experiences more absorption? So comparing visible and infrared, 
uh, I would conclude that infrared has more absorption. Comparing the ultraviolet and the infrared types of light, which would you say has an easier time of going through our atmosphere? So comparing ultraviolet and infrared. Well, there are windows where infrared can get through and there's less absorption. There's just basically one window where the absorption falls for ultraviolet. So UV has more absorption. Based upon figures one and two, why is the ultraviolet light not an important energy source for heating the surface of Earth? Well, two, two parts. One, it's not most of the energy. And two, doesn't make it to the ground. What gas molecules are primarily responsible for the absorption of each of the following types of light in our atmosphere? Um, in the ultraviolet, it is O2 and O3. So molecular oxygen and ozone. It doesn't say what's going on in the visible. Uh, it's really scattering. Um, so it's just sort of overall from the atmosphere. In infrared, we have water vapor and carbon dioxide, and a little bit from oxygen ozone. Right there. So molecules that are transparent to visible light but absorb and re-emit infrared light are known as greenhouse gases because they act just like a pane of glass in a greenhouse does. Glass is transparent to visible light but opaque to infrared light. So greenhouse gases, uh, the two greenhouse gases who are most responsible for absorbing infrared light in Earth's atmosphere are carbon dioxide and water where most of those absorption features came from. Once visible light from the sun reaches the surface of Earth, some of it is reflected back towards space as visible light, and the, return, the remaining light is absorbed by the ground. Reflected light does not change the temperature of the surface, so it's going back out into space, whereas absorbed light causes the temperature of the surface to increase. Earth's heated surface then gives off infrared light to Earth's atmosphere as a, in a, an effort to cool off. So think this through. As an example, on a hot day, black asphalt absorbs more visible light and gives off more infrared light than does a white crosswalk or uh, green grass, for example. On summer days, I would much rather walk across green grass than across black asphalt barefoot. And that is why. All right, the sun is approximately 6,000 Kelvin, so 5,800, at the surface and has an energy distribution that peaks at visible wavelengths. Earth's surface is much cooler at about 288 Kelvin. What type of light do you think Earth's surface primarily gives off? Ultraviolet, visible, or infrared light? So it's gonna give off infrared, it is cooler so it peaks at a longer wavelength from Dean's Law. So Earth's surface is going to try to cool off by radiating infrared light. Does Earth's surface give off light at night? If so, what type? If not, why not? Um, I'm going to skip ahead to the debate and we'll come back to question nine. Consider the following debate between two students regarding the energy given off by Earth's surface. Student one. The sun mainly gives off visible light, and so does Earth's surface, because I can see it during the daytime. Student 2. But that's just reflected sunlight. 
Earth's surface is much cooler than the sun and mostly gives off energy closer to the kind that our bodies give off, infrared light. I'm not sure, but I think that the surface probably radiates infrared light during both the daytime and the nighttime based upon its temperature. So student two is doing good today. Student one is mistaking reflected light for emitted light. The surface of Earth is not 6,000 Kelvin, thank God. Uh, so it is not emitting thermal radiation, the characteristic of that temperature. And so let's go back to nine. Does Earth's surface give off light at night? Sure does. It tries to cool off by radiating infrared light. Will the light given off by Earth's surface easily travel back through the atmosphere to space, or will it be absorbed by molecules in the atmosphere? It is going to be absorbed. The Earth is cooling off by radiating in the infrared, and the atmosphere absorbs a lot of that infrared light. This figure is a little complicated, but very important. Figure three shows how light and energy flows through the Earth's system for the greenhouse effect. The numbers listed describe the amount of energy flowing through the system in units of watts per square meter. It's a flux. A larger number indicates that more energy is flowing through that labeled pathway. Just go through and we can make sure this all makes sense. So the amount of incoming energy from the sun as sunlight, 342 watts per square meter. Some of that is reflected by Earth's atmosphere and it goes directly back out into space, 77 watts per square meter. Some of that 342 is absorbed by the atmosphere, that's 67 watts per square meter, and what's left over is absorbed by the surface if it's not reflected. So the surface reflects 30 watts per square meter back out into space. So Earth's surface absorbs 168 watts per square meter. Earth's surface emits 492 watts per square meter. Of that 492, 452 watts per square meter from the 492 is absorbed by Earth's atmosphere. 40 watts per square meter goes back out into space. Of that 452 watts per square meter that is absorbed into the atmosphere, it is re radiated. 195 watts per square meter is able to make it out into space. 324 watts per square meter is absorbed by the surface of Earth again. So direct sunlight is giving us 168 watts per square meter and the atmosphere re-radiating infrared light at us is giving us 324 watts per square meter. That is the greenhouse effect. All right. How does the total amount of energy coming from the sun compare to the total amount of energy leaving from Earth to space? Uh, provide numbers to support your answers. Uh, so incoming is 342 watts per square meter, the intensity of sunlight. What is going back out into space? Um, 30 plus 77 plus 40 plus 195 watts per square meter is again 342 watts per square meter. So it's not an imbalance. As much energy is coming from the sun to earth as earth is re-radiating back out into space. So the entire Earth overall is not changing its temperature. 
What is changing is that different regions of Earth are changing their temperatures. The surface is getting warmer, the upper atmosphere is actually getting cooler. You add those effects all together, the temperature is remaining constant. The input of energy from the sun is exactly matched by the Earth reading that energy back out into space. All right. What type of light primarily heats Earth's surface and where does this light come from? So let's look down at Earth's surface. This is getting 168 from direct sunlight, 324 from infrared from the atmosphere. So tallest of all us is 324. What type of light primarily heats Earth's atmosphere? And where does this light come from? So, from direct sunlight, it absorbs 67. And then from the re-radiated uh, energy from Earth's surface, the atmosphere is getting 452. 452 is bigger than 67. Okay. Is more energy absorbed by Earth's surface in the form of light coming from the sun or from light emitted by Earth's atmosphere? Explain your reasoning and provide numbers. And it's from light emitted by Earth's atmosphere. We had 168 watts per square meter from the sun and 324 watts per square meter. Due to the light absorbed by Earth's surface that was emitted by Earth's atmosphere, is Earth's temperature near the surface going to be warmer or cooler than it would be without this absorbed light? It is warmer. And we want to fill in the empty boxes in figure four below with the correct type of light. You see abbreviations UV, IR, and VIS for visible. Right. So what is coming in from the sun at the time it reaches the surface, predominantly visible, uh, sunlight absorbed by Earth's atmosphere, that's where we lose pretty much all of the UV, um, some absorption in the visible, some in infrared. Amount of sunlight reflected by Earth's atmosphere it goes directly back out into space. It's mostly in the visible because that's where the atmosphere is transparent. Amount of sunlight reflected by Earth's surface that goes directly out into space. That's also visible light. All right. Energy emitted by Earth's surface that is absorbed by Earth's atmosphere. So Earth's surface is closer to that 288 Kelvin uh, so that is light that is infrared. Some of it does make it through all the way out into space. And then we have the re-radiated light. Some coming down to Earth and some being able to escape into space. The flow of energy shown in figures three and four is the source of the natural atmospheric greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect. Visible light penetrates the atmosphere and is absorbed by the surface. The heated surface gives off infrared light that is then absorbed by the atmosphere. 
the heated atmosphere gives off infrared light out to space and also back down to Earth's surface, making the surface temperature warmer than it would be without a greenhouse effect. The amount of energy entering and leaving the Earth's system can be balanced, it is, but Earth's surface temperature is warmer because the surface is heated by both visible light from the sun and infrared light sent back from the atmosphere. So I consider the following debate between the two students regarding the greenhouse effect. Student one. So the greenhouse effect is caused by infrared light being trapped in Earth's atmosphere. Visible light from the sun heats the ground, but the infrared light given off by the ground gets permanently trapped in the atmosphere and can never escape. Student two, I think that's close, but based on figure three, all of the arrows balance and just as much energy leaves Earth as comes in. I think the greenhouse effect makes the surface hotter than it would be without greenhouse gases because the ground gets visible light from the sun and infrared light from the atmosphere given off back to the surface. So student two is right. Student one is saying that the energy is trapped in the atmosphere so the earth will just heat up and heat up and heat up and heat up with no possibility of that infrared light getting out and that is not the way the atmosphere behaves there you go